Hello. In this short video, we are going to be looking at diffusion from a microscopic point of view. So what is diffusion? Well, in terms of a physical object or substance, diffusion is the net movement of that object or substance from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. In the movie above, we have elastically interacting particles in a circular container, which behave like an ideal gas. The central region has a high concentration of the red coloured particles and a low concentration of the blue coloured particles. The outer region has a high concentration of blue particles and a low concentration of red particles. You'll notice there is nothing between the two regions. It's simply that one contains more red and one contains more blue particles. Now watch what happens as we allow time to pass. Keep your eye on both the red and the blue particles. We can see that the red particles are spread out and the blue particles are spread inwards. The net result after some time is that both colours are well mixed. If you the viewer try to keep the track of any one particle, you will only see random movement as it bounces off and collides around. Only when you look at the whole picture do you see the phenomenon of diffusion. And this is an important concept in physics. Individual particles follow their own microscopic laws, in this case Newtonian physics, but overall they can be described by macroscopic laws, in this case thermodynamics. Next we have the same system as before, but we have placed the inner red particles inside an almost closed container. There is only a small gap on the right hand side to which particles can escape. Watch what happens as we allow time to pass. The inner container contains more red particles and so over a given period of time is more likely that a red particle will leave than a blue particle will enter. Complementary, the outer container contains more blue particles and so it is more likely that a blue particle will enter the inner container. The key word here is more likely. Just because there are more red particles in the middle does not mean no red particles can re-enter. Likewise, just because there are more blue particles in the outer container does not mean blue particles will re-enter from the middle. If you re-watch this video over and over, you will see several instances where this occurs. At the end, we can see that there are now red particles in the outer container and blue particles in the inner container. They have diffused. So if we look at the beginning and end of the movie that I've just played, we can calculate the concentration for the two containers. One at time zero and one after some time. We can see the concentration has changed. Here the concentration is defined as the number of particles divided by the area. Concentration change occurs until the concentration in the centre and outside is equal. This does not mean the concentration of red and blue particles becomes equal, since they have different numbers of particles. We see at the start the concentrations were unequal, hence we should have some net diffusion, which you can see here. And likewise, even after we've waited some time, the concentrations indeed have changed, but they are still unequal. Therefore, there will still be net diffusion across the boundary. So how can we speed up diffusion? Well, one way to speed it up is to heat the particles. So here we have the same situation as before, but with the inner region containing hotter particles. That is to say, they have more average kinetic energy when starting out. You can see that in the same amount of time, we have a much higher rate of diffusion from the centre to the outside and vice versa. The red particles are free to pass on their kinetic energy to the blue particles, giving all the particles on average more kinetic energy once enough collisions has been reached. The higher the temperature of the system, the more average kinetic energy, and hence the average speed of all the particles. This will result in faster diffusion of the entire system. Now as before, we can look at the two concentrations for the inner and outer regions. We can see that both the blue and red particles have moved closer to equilibrium than before when the particles were not heated. The limiting factor in this case is the small gap that both colours must pass through in order to equilibrate, which is a restriction of flow for the particles. 
Given enough time, these concentrations would equalize in both the outer and inner regions, for both particles independently. And without the restriction, we're going to now compare the low temperature and the high temperature of the inner red particles. And we can see that when the particles start off hotter, diffusion occurs much more rapidly between the species. If you've seen any of my other video series about modeling thermodynamics in Python, you will have seen that two different temperatures of particles will rapidly equilibrate. Now let's take a look at what happens when we make an even more torturous path for the particles to travel. Here we have the exact same initial conditions for the red particles of temperature and concentration, macroscopically. Our initial position and initial velocity, microscopically. As we allow time to pass, we can see that it takes much more time for the red particles to make their way into the outer container when there is a more restrictive path in the way. Likewise, the blue particles also must travel this more restrictive path and so it takes them longer to equilibrate from the outside to the inside also. And this situation is quite common in real life. A standard takeaway box, for example, is not completely airtight, but it does create enough of a torturous path with such a small restriction that any smells inside take a long time to diffuse through these small gaps. And so thanks for watching, please leave a like or dislike, and if you did like this video, please consider pressing the subscribe button to keep up to date with more videos like this.